<clears throat> Ooh, that's not a good start. Anyways, Strike Force uh, finally having its continuation of the heavyweight GP, and uh, here come my predictions for the fight card. Uh, going by the order on MMA Playground, we have Magnolia Meta versus Connor Hume. Going with Connor Hume here by unanimous decision. Not seeing a lot of Magno Almeida. And maybe that's coloring me here, but uh, Connor Hewn, a good fighter. I was kind of let down when he lost to George Grigel by UE because uh, that was the fight I thought he would win. But he's a pretty good kickboxer and has some decent counter wrestling. So I see him being able to just basically sprawl and brawl this and out technically uh, matching Magno, Magno Almeida. Todd Moore versus Mikel uh, Bronzelis. Zolis? I don't know how to say his name. I have seen him fight. Um, I'm taking him over Todd Moore. Todd Moore is a solid journeyman, but uh, Brazelis is a better athlete, more explosive. I think he can put Todd Moore on his back. I think he can outstrike Todd Moore. I don't see Todd Moore particularly out submitting him. The way I, Todd Moore might be able to win this is via the lay and pray method of if he can take down him, if he can take him down, hold him down, he can possibly win a unanimous decision. But. Gonna go with Bronzelis by unanimous you know, decision himself. Uh, Jay Z Calvacanti versus Justin Wilcox. Normally, this would be a completely no brainer fight, but the concern with Jay Z is well, he is a very good boxer, uh, kickboxer, very good grappler, very good wrestler in his own right, very powerful, very explosive, very athletic, and I, I think much larger than Justin Wilcox. Although Wilcox is a phenomenal wrestler in his own right. Wilcox's other areas of his game are very much works in progress, both on the ground and on in the, on the feet. Problem is, Jay Z hasn't fought consistently for some time, and for a guy who was once, you know, we were talking about top five lightweight in the world, he's, his stock has definitely crashed in uh, recent times. That being said, I'm going to still take Jay Z to win against Justin Wilcox, probably via a second round TKO. I don't think Wilcox is quite ready for him, uh, a fighter of this level yet, although he is a promising prospect. Guy's picking up skills. Um, I think he might be better suited to 145, but still. I'm taking Jay-Z. Uh, KJ Nunes versus uh, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Um, again, another another close fight. Uh, Masvidal has the skills in other ways. If he can take down KJ Nunes, he should be able to win this fight. Um, KJ Nunes doesn't really offer much of a threat off his back. On the feet, i got to give the slight edge to Nunes. He is a very, very good boxer. One of the best boxers at 155. Uh, Masvidal is absolutely no slouch, um, but he does tend to fight a bit dumb. And that could lead to a boxing match here with KJ Nunes. I don't see Nunes knocking him out. I've got Nunes winning by unanimous decision because he's very hard to take down. And Masvidal's wrestling is not amazing. So I'm going with KJ Nunes to outpoint Masvidal on the feet. But if Masvidal can come out, plow KJ to the ground, uh, this is a very different fight. I just don't think he can do it. Then we have Chad, or uh, no, we have Munson versus uh, Cormier. So Jeff Munson versus Daniel Cormier. Going with Daniel Cormier. Um, well, Munson is a better technical striker. He has no real reach, no particular power. Um, well, he is a decent wrestler. I don't see him submitting Cormier off his back, and Cormier is an Olympic-level wrestler. Cormier is an outstanding wrestler. He should be able to, you know, work a little bit on the feet and then take down Munson, hold him down. Munson, like I said, not particularly amazing off his back. He's very much topside grappler for ADC uh, purposes. Not to say he can't catch people and stuff. I believe he caught Brandon Lee Hinkle from the bottom. But I think Cormier is not afraid to make this fight boring and just hold Munson down to get the victory. Then we have the alternate fight in the tournament. Valentino Overeem versus Chad Griggs. Chad Griggs is just really not that good of a fighter. He's gotten... I mean, of course, he had the big win over Bobby Lashley, but we kind of know what Bobby Lashley is now, uh, mentally and cardio-wise. Not terribly great. Um... And then I honestly cannot remember who he beat in his first, uh, you know, secondary tournament fight, I guess, would be the way to put it. Hang on a sec. Uh, yeah, he beat uh, Volante, who's way too small. Um, he's not big enough to 
really outmuscle Overeem, which is Overeem's problem historically. Overeem, I think, is a better stand-up guy. I think he's much better on the ground. I don't. Uh, Chad Griggs, when I've seen him on the ground, really more or less just gets destroyed. So I'm gonna go with Valentine Overeem with a a third round tap out here. Josh Barnett versus Brett Rogers. Josh Barnett licensed once again. Surprisingly, uh, his drug suspension for the steroids, I believe, did run out, but they got him relicensed in Texas. So take a guess on how that happened. Um, Barnett, better technical striking than Rogers. Better wrestling than Rogers. Far better on the ground. Uh, better cardio, I think. Rogers in his last fight looked terrible against Ruben Villarreal. But, I mean, it's Ruben Villarreal, and he still beat him. Um, I see Barnett being able to take him down and getting a tap out here pretty damn early. Um, I'll say second round, because Rogers, Rogers is a big guy. I think he'll have to get tired. Rogers has got that puncher's chance, and people are going to say, well, he's a better striker. He really isn't. He's a clumsy striker, a slow striker. He just has a lot of power. Uh, then we have the main event, Alistair Overeem versus Fabricio Verdum. Of course, Verdum has beaten Alistair, but that was more the the Overeem Alistair instead of the Uberim Alistair that has, you know, cardio, strength, bigger, stronger, fast, not necessarily faster, but just better. <coughs> Excuse me. In general, what does Verdum have in this fight? Well, I think people are underestimating the threat he posts on the ground. Like, there are people saying that... If he get the, goes to the ground, Overeem will just stand up. I don't see that being the case. If Verdum can get this to the ground, he has a very good chance of winning. Overeem sticks his head into bad positions, arms, and so on. It was it was something that plagued him at 205, in addition to the horrendous cardio and so on, is that he is very aggressive and will put himself in positions where he can be submitted. The problem is, I don't see Verdum being able to take him down. Verdum's not a terribly explosive wrestler. He could pull guard, I suppose. But is that really a good idea with Overeem when Overeem can pound your face in? He doesn't have a particularly amazing chin. It's not, you know, a glass chin. I see him lasting through the first round and getting finished in the second round by Overeem. But I think people undersell the threat that he does pose. I think he, him and... Barnett and maybe Heratonoff are the guys that can possibly knock Overeem off. Verdun by submission, Barnett via wrestling, and Heratonoff via striking. Although I do believe that Overeem is a better striker than Heratonoff. Heratonoff can get inside. Very tough guy. Very powerful. Very skilled in his own right. Has beaten Overeem in the past. Um, anyways, that's my thoughts on the upcoming card. Still taking over him to win the whole tournament, but the dark horse is definitely Josh Barnett. Um, just a quick rant here about happenings in MMA. Judging for UFC 131. Terrible. 30-27 for Munoz against Maya. Bullshit. The whole Elkins uh, winning his fight. Crap. And I um, can't remember who it was, but there's another 30-27 in there. Honestly, can't remember which fight now. Damn it. Anyways, that was complete crap. Uh, once again, I've said it many times, better educated judges are really needed. I don't understand how you can mess these judging up. Like, there are close rounds that can go either way. This wasn't the case. Anyways, that's all for now. Um, I'll hit you back when I have something more to say.